Uh, here I am walking past you guys. <laughs> nothing to see here, nothing to see here. Yeah. Oliver Barker. Joey, great to see you. Great to see you, Mr. Paul Joey, Horowitz. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, this is um, beyond exciting. I think, is this part of the Gloucester 400 or is this separate? It is part of the Gloucester 400, um, but it's the Cape Ann Museum doing something special um, in addition to our 400 plus celebrations to celebrate the uh, 100th anniversary of this seminal year when Edward Hopper and Joseph Mipherson Hopper reconnected here in Gloucester. Um, and inspired by this place, created um, the wonderful array of art that you see around you today. Um, but together, really launched Hopper's career as the artist we know him today. And I don't think that, um, so people that are in the art world already know how unbelievable this is. Um, I don't know how to give the lay person that really isn't into the art world or doesn't know can you give a little idea of the scope of just how unbelievable and the number of Hopper paintings we have here and where Hopper like ranks in not just the local artwork, not, not like he is not, he's, can you, you know what I'm trying to yeah, say? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah. But I mean, it's, 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 yeah. I mean, the MFA had a Hopper show. They did, and, and there was a, a show that went from the MFA to the National Gallery and then on to the Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, and interestingly, you should mention that because the curator behind that exhibition, Elliot Boswick Davis, is the curator behind our exhibition. She's the guest curator for this exhibition. And to your earlier question, Hopper um, is perhaps best known as one of the 20th century's um, most loved and respected American painters. Um, that's very significant. And I think what we will be trying to tell in this exhibition is the role that Gloucester played in actually shaping that career. When he comes here, he came here on five um, successive visits. The first visit was 1912. And five of his paintings from that visit that he made here with um, fellow artist Leon Kroll along with you as part of this exhibition. But where Hopper gains momentum is in 1923. He comes here, he reconnects with Joe Nipperson Hopper, who was a fellow student um, of the artist Robert Hemright. And during that summer of 1923, they reconnected personally and professionally. And uh, at the end of that summer, uh, Joe Nipperson Hopper, she was uh, at that point a better known and more widely exhibited painter. Um, Hopper was 41 years of age and hadn't sold anything in a decade. Uh, and what changed is the fact that um, in the fall of that year, when they returned to New York, where they were both residing, Joe Nivison made an introduction for Edward Hopper to the Brooklyn Museum of Art. The Brooklyn Museum was putting on uh, a, their second Biennale of American watercolors. And Joe Nivison said to the curators there, I've met this artist, Edward Hopper, I think you should look at, at his work. They looked at the work, they accepted six of um, his Gloucester watercolours in their show, and at the end of the exhibition they bought one, a painting um, based on Rocky Neck called The Mansard Roof. And that sale was his second um, only sale in his 41-year um, um, uh, <laughs> lifespan. Um, and what's interesting is people, I hope, walk around this show, they'll see many familiar scenes. Most of these houses are still here. I think it's interesting when, Gloucester, when, when uh, Hopper came here to Gloucester, that he, he was attracted by the grit of this place, the cultural identity that we all still draw from the fact that this is an active fishing uh, city. Um, and so he came here because of the infrastructure, the infrastructure of this modern American city interested him. And when you look around the room, there are very few beach scenes. Many artists today, they come here, they're inspired by the wonderful, very unique light um, and the oceans and the beaches that are just so fabulous about, uh, uh, all areas of Cape Ann. Um, but it's interesting to me that when Hopper came here, he, he looked into the city. Mm. He focused on the homes of the working fishing families um, and he imbued those houses with a, a personality and identity that is just really captivating and exciting. And uh, so when you come, you won't see many glistening scenes of oceans and beaches, and uh, uh, but what you will see uh, 
these wonderful portrayals of, of, of uh, life here on Cape Ann. Um, and so Hopper's significant. Um, he's, he's part of a group of early uh, 20th century artists that um, all came to Gloucester because there was something here that inspired, and still, I would argue, inspired so many artists to come and paint um, and to interpret this, this great place. The scale of this show, is it a show or is it an exhibit? What do we call it? Show, exhibit. Show. It, is, okay. it is great. So I make sure I get it right. But the scale of this, to have this many of his works in the same space, in a home right here, is such a gift. And who can we attribute um, like to make to making this? This just doesn't happen. You don't snap your fingers and you get a, a like a, a, this many Hopper pieces in the same place, let alone our yeah. little community. Well, you know, it's interesting because <laughs> I've heard Oliver speak about this. And actually, Cape Ann Museum only owns one Hopper. We do. All the rest are from someplace else. It's a beautiful Hopper drawing that actually um, is uh, of cemetery that's very close to our other campus, the Cape Ann Museum Green. And in assembling this exhibition, back um, in the height of the pandemic in 2020, um, I was very conscious of wanting to find something that the museum could offer as part of the 400 plus celebrations. I uh, really wanted to, to look at, um, uh, and I knew from my own art history background, there was this pivotal moment of 1923 when Hopper came here, made this painting, a series of paintings, but sold one and, and the rest was sort of history. And um, I knew in order to pull this off that I would need to have a partner in crime. And that partner for me was Elliot Bosworth Davis. As, as a, a former colleague at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, um, she's the person who was responsible for helping build the new American wing at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Um, she had stepped away to become the director of the Norton Museum in Florida. And in stepping down from that position during the pandemic, I gave her a month and I called her and I said, Elliot, I've got this idea. We really would love to do something special for 1923. And I, I knew that she had been one of the key curators of the Hopper exhibition you mentioned um, back in 2007. And uh, I, what I didn't realize was that very early on in Elliot's career, she, as a, a junior curator at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, had actually cur curated her first exhibition here, looking at the work of Fitzhenry Lane as a self-taught artist. Mm -hmm. So Elliot's hearing me ask, will you partner with me on this show? And I think she was thinking, well, maybe the Cape Ann Museum has a great cache of work by Edward Hopper. <laughs> I shared with her, we had just one, but Elliot is tenacious, she's a scholar, she's passionate for the work that she does. And really, together with myself, um, she should be credited for making this happen because soon after that conversation, she turned around and said, yes, um, we, um, we approached the Whitney Museum of American Art based in New York. Which has um, the largest collection of hoppers, don't they? They do. So when the hoppers passed away just 10 months um, uh, uh, after one another in the late 1960s, Joe Nivison Hopper gave their entire holding of her work and his to the Whitney Museum. Um, that still to this day is the biggest gift of a single artist work to any museum oh um, in America. And so we knew that in order to mount this exhibition, we would need their blessing, but also their partnership. Mm -hmm. And Adam Weinberg as their director, um, he could understand that, uh, he understood the importance of this show. We have the place, the Cape Ann Museum, we are fortunate enough to reside in the very place that is in fact, has inspired so many artists. And so, um, so they said, yes, they are um, our, our collaborator in this exhibition. That's significant for the Cape Ann Museum. Mm -hmm. I think in our 148 year history, we have never collaborated with a national level institution. Of, um, there's never been a collaboration of this magnitude. Um, and once the Whitney said yes, we then approached many other institutions and private lenders. And so the result of that here is that we have um, if we take away the one Hopper work that we have, <laughs> there are 64 other works, either by Edward Hopper or Joe Nivison Hopper that are in this show. Um, and we also borrowed one very special painting by um, their joint teacher, Robert Henry, which is an early portrait of Joe Nivison as a painting student. Okay. Um, so there are 66 works in the show, um, and as I say, 65 of them have uh, either by Joe Nivison Hopper or Edward Hopper. I was interested in the fact that what you said about Joe actually being 
the most, the more known painter when they first met. And yet she gave it all up, didn't she, to support him? She did. And she, um, at the time of their reconnecting here in 1923, she'd exhibited her work widely, wide, um, widely in New York and in Paris, um, in other places. And I think in coming here and, and meeting him again, um, she over time realized that he had a talent, but he also needed some help. And as, so, as is so often the case um, in many partnerships throughout the 20th century, um, she gave up so much of her own career to support his. Mm -hmm. uh, but so you have both of their works here. And, we and, do. And because there, are, there are a couple of them that, where you have the same, essentially the same painting or same scene, but painted by each of them. Because I think, yeah. as, as a blatant painter myself, um, um, I'm really interested in the artistic process. And I think we, and I hope our visitors, will learn so much from actually seeing the works they made side by side. Mm -hmm. um, it's wonderful to see their two very different interpretations of um, Our Lady of Good Voyage. As many people um, may know, we have that wonderful statue that's uh, come from the top of the church. Mm -hmm. uh, and they both painted her. Mm -hmm. Um, and so uh, the invitation, of course, to everyone this summer and early fall is to come to see these wonderful hoppers, but to avail themselves of the opportunity, as you were saying to me um, offline, Joey, there is so much wonderful history in these walls. Yeah. It's our collective history. And we really want this community to understand that um, their stories are equally important as those of Joe Nibison Hopper and Edward Hopper. Uh, and and so I, the invitation is there to make the connections. Come see their portrayal of Our Lady of Good Voyage, but then go see Our Lady um, in our maritime galleries, which is at the core of who we are as an institution. I was going to ask you about go see because I know one of the things you do is I mean, so many of Hopper's subjects are still here; they're still lived in. <laughs> yeah, and you do walking tours, don't you? We do. So thanks to the wonderful volunteers and docents that we have here supporting our activities as a museum. Um, during the exhibition, um, every uh, Tuesday through Saturday, we are offering um, docent-led tours, hopper walking tours around um, wow. the immediate area of the museum. That's the amazing thing. Um, behind us here on the wall, we're looking at a house that was um, is still there on Washington Street, um, but an off-screen, so I apologize to, to everyone following us today. Um, there are these two wonderful paintings, both inspired by Prospect Street, which, mm -hmm. as we know, it's a one-minute walk it's from right the front there. door of the museum. <laughs> yes. um, so uh, with these walking tours led by our docents, you'll have the ability to uh, actually go and visit at least 10 different sites, um, all within um, uh, a very short radius of the museum. Um, and if uh, because those tours, they're tours that we offer uh, normally during the, the summer months, um, we've also developed a printed guide so that for those who can't get on a tour, um, you can actually go on a self-guided tour to see over 36 different oh. sites that um, Hopper painted. That's fabulous. So there's a lot to see. There is. Yeah. And so uh, the, it's starting on his birthday, the 22nd. Which Opens is... on Saturday. He yes. turns 141 and we uh, <laughs> <laughs> we welcome his, his works back here after a century. Um, and then the show is going to run all the way through October the 16th. So we have these um, wonderful, inspiring works here for 12 weeks. There are um, six special lectures that we're holding um, throughout the um, duration of the exhibition. So people will have many opportunities to come and hear from uh, fantastic scholars from around the school, well, uh, from around this nation, um, who are coming here to Gloucester to speak about um, the hoppers in some context. Um, and then in less, late September on the 29th and 30th, we are holding a special symposium where for those people who want to join us in doing a, a deep dive um, into the lives of Edward and Joe Nipperson Hopper and their contemporaries, um, there'll be a two day symposium here as well. So he was here in the 20s, the yeah. Roaring 20s. Mm -hmm. The Roaring 20s. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you suppose, but he was broke because he did, uh, or was, was he the son of a wealthy person? I wonder because- He wasn't, his, his, his parents were merchants. They, yeah. He grew up in Nyack, New York, overlooking the Hudson River. Um, he, I think he came from modest means and mm -hmm. certainly prior to making that sale of the Mansard roof, he had eked out a living as an illustrator and um, as a graphic artist, and as an etcher. Um, so fascinating how many of them did. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was. Yeah. 
a few years ago, we had the you know, privilege of organizing that wonderful exhibition of the works of Winfell Homer, who was here. Who was also an illustrator to and, pay the rent. Right, yeah. but then also here, learned how to use watercolors like Hopper, yeah. and, um, uh, and, and then launched his career as a painter. So the, the, the parallel stories between both men. So I heard a rumor that when you were considering coming to this job, there were two exhibitions you wanted to do. That is true. And you've done them both now. Well, I've done them both, exactly. Okay. But Homer then we, Homer. we've got a few more up our <laughs> sleeve. Okay. So, oh. at, uh, yeah. um, so uh, the museum turns 150 in 2025. Yeah. It's America's um, 250th anniversary in 2026. So yeah. we've got lots of good plans. Nice. So, uh, How many uh, uh, Fitzhenry Lanes are there? Or do you have? Uh, so we have general? over 40 paintings by Fitzhenry Lane and 120 of his preparatory drawings. Mm -hmm. Um, and Lane, That's um, considerable. It's, it, we're the only institution in the world that right. um, has those holdings. And it's interesting to me that it's the presence of Lane um, and those physical collections that is in actual fact allowing us to do the Winslow Homer show and inviting us to do the Hopper show. Um, it, it is, um, it legitimizes, that collection legitimizes our presence as a museum um, uh, in a global context. Uh, and I hope in these recent years, particularly with the advent of our new wonderful Cato Museum Green Campus, that um, we are now able to do a lot more in terms of engaging the community. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, it's wonderful to have these exhibitions where we bring together um, the important art that um, is out there in the world, informed by this singular unique place of Cape Ann. But most importantly, to your earlier point, we really want to make sure that the community understands that we're here as their resource. Um, uh, we're here to tell their stories. Uh, and we had that wonderful show last year with your support and others too of uh, family fishing vessels. Uh, and that was, it was in an adjacent gallery. We had over you know, 140 community submissions to show um, the important connections that families living here today have to the fishing industry. Uh, so we, we want to make sure that we represent all these stories. Um, as a vibrant and, and um, engaging place that celebrates our collective history. So I'm going to just do a, one little inter, like an interjection, like a uh, my my pitch that I do once every two or three months. If you haven't been here in the last 20 years, you got to come. I mean, this is insane that we have this here. If if you've never been here, you got to come. If you've been here just before this exhibit, you gotta come. This is just absolutely insane. Okay, that, that's and now we go back to our regularly scheduled program. Uh, but uh, well, it's a great pitch. So thank you. I have I have a question. What years was uh, Fitzhenry Lane uh, painting here? So Fitzhenry Lane was born here. He returns here in the early eighteen forties, and he passes away in eighteen sixty five. Um, oh, so, so, so well, really well before, before 100 years so, before. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so there was there was no physical overlap. You have uh, uh, Winslow Homer who came here um, starting in 1869 and made five, similarly, in fact, five successive visits up to 1880. Um, and what's interesting, Homer uh, passes away in 1910, and after his passing, there were a whole series of um, exhibitions, memorial exhibitions, um, in his honor. And Edward Hopper, as a young 30-something, would have seen that work. He would have known about the important role that Gloucester played mm -hmm. in, in particular, the Cape Ann in general, in, in shaping of Homer's career. And I think it's one of the reasons why, on um, the invitation of Leon Kroll, he came here in 1912, and that he wanted to come back here in 1923. Um, so so we, we were down right at the entrance. I yes. have to mention this because this is kind of crazy. Yes. You still have this artifact. Uh, well, I'll let you tell the story though, because uh, in, in, a, in a glass case, there is a photo of the museum right when first, the first year it opened? Is first it? year we opened here on Pleasant Street um, in 1926. The museum at that point was contained uh, within the walls of the Captain Davis house, mm -hmm. um, which um, is still a very important part of, of the museum's operations. It's where we have our offices and there are four rooms downstairs that are set up in, in period style. 
Um, so when, which um, as a sixth grader, Joey got to see every it. Yeah. every every kid that was, went to O'Malley School got that tour. Yeah. And you'll, yeah. that's, if you haven't been here since then, that's what you'll remember from the right. museum. Yeah. But I promise you, there's a crazy amount more that like will blow your mind if you yeah. haven't been back since. So, so, so in that, in that so, class, so so in so um, in 1926, in, during that summer when the museum had just opened our operations here. The last person to visit on the last day of the museum's opening was Jo Niverson Hopper. She signed the guest book. So for anyone coming to visit us, um, the Hopper experience actually begins in our entranceway. We have this wonderful document cool. with, along with photographs from our library and archives collection showing what the museum would have looked like back then. Um, uh, and so we have this very tangible connection to Jo Niverson. Um, and obviously because of the presence of all these wonderful loans, very tangible connection to the hoppers in general and the inspiration they drew from um, the city that we all call home. Absolutely. I think it's fascinating that you mentioned Lane and, 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 and Hopper and Homer. And, and so many of us think about artists coming to Gloucester because of the light. But all, those three and so many since then and many of our contemporary artists are drawn for this, the infrastructure. The, the, the buildings, the shapes, the, the, yeah. the, the, the industry, the waterfront, you know, and it's, uh, it's fascinating how that tradition has just, that thread has is through on. everything. Yeah. It's so true, and in looking around this room at some of the, the works by both Joe and, and Edward Hopper, um, it's, Hopper is known for his corner scenes, those diners, you yeah. think about Nightfall. Nightfall, yes. Famous, famous painting that's in the is she, of is, is the Is the woman in the thing, is that Joe? They're always Joe. So yeah. after they're married, she is his sole model muse and manager. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. Um, so yes, it's always Joe. It's like you're um, a real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. 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 But as you walk around the, um, uh, the exhibition, people are going to see some, some corner buildings, those very distinctive corner buildings that we all know and love here in Gloucester. Um, he painted those corners first here in Gloucester. And um, he's known for, I think, painting uh, 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 America's most, um, most prominent fire hydrants um, in, terms of in terms of American art. But he painted fire hydrants first here. And so it's wonderful to go around the room to find that and you'll see that he's actually developing his American language based on what he's seeing here in this city. Mm -hmm. So it's um, really wild. Gloss is a really yes. significant place. And I so thank you for obviously coming and uh, sharing your enthusiasm for what we're doing as an institution. Yeah, I just, I, I just can't believe what a gift uh, for you and your I Elliot. Guess, Elliot. Yes, uh, God bless the work that you guys have done to get this to happen here. It's such a gift to our community. I hope everyone understands the magnitude of what is happening in these walls. This is just absolutely, like people around the country are probably so jealous of us. It's just crazy. Uh, we and, hope they're jealous. We hope they come <laughs> visit because we know that culture can be a great, um, or cultural institutions can be a great driver for cultural tourism. And I, I in highlighting the significant role that um, Elliot and myself and others have played, I just want to draw attention to the fact that we have a really dedicated board and volunteer group and staff. And this is, it's no small feat. We have a small team of 20 people who work here full time for the museum. And I just put a big shout out to all of them because we couldn't do it without their support. So Absolutely. it's a collective effort and uh, uh, what a privilege that we can do what we do. Absolutely. So. Uh, July 22nd. July the 22nd to October the 16th. Um, we are offering um, time tickets for this experience because we want people to be able to spend um, ample time here. And so we are controlling when people come into the building. So you can pre-purchase a ticket online. And um, as I say, there are lectures and a symposium and lots of other ways you can engage with the, the Hopper's story um, and Gloucester's history um, during these next 12 weeks. kbmuseum.org. KBAMuseum.org. There you go. Very simple. Uh, you know, I always, Google is your friend, KBAMuseum.org, for, for much more information than we could even provide. And thank you so much. Joey, Paul, thank you so much. Such thank a you. pleasure. Paul, this has been great. Thanks, Thanks, All right, this is where I go around and I turn it off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much.